Why is your league so repressed? Like, they had no room for you. You can't be the punter who wants to be a stand-up comic. They don't want a thinker. They don't want a funny guy. Like, why is that league so repressed? Uh, you know, the league, the Shield, represents a lot of things. They sell a lot of merch to a lot of kids. I speak to the adults on the Internet, so I'm not exactly their prototype professional football player. I love everything you just said, though, about the refs celebrating the challenge. <laughs> I've always said that back in the day, whenever a challenge happened, Ed Hockey Lee should have came out and said, like I said, and that's how we should lead <laughs> off the call after coming out of the booth. Uh, Dan, this is an honor to join you guys here. I'm a huge fan. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, no. Thank you for coming on with us because you've carved your own lane, man. And I love the guys who do it their way. And you've been a little crazy about how you've done it your way. Just tell the people what, like, what did you turn down to say bleep football? I'm going to go make money, you know, making jokes. Well, I had a couple years left on my contract, roughly $6 million, which is stupid money, grossly overpaid. Nobody who kicks a football should get paid that amount of money anyways, but I was due for it. Uh, and I just got to the point where I didn't enjoy kicking balls on fourth downs anymore, Dan. I mean, you walk out on the field after your <laughs> offense fails, the home stadium <laughs> boos you because Andrew Luck couldn't get a first down. You're at away games. You go on the field. You get a standing ovation. It's like, I, I don't know what to do here. I just kind of fell out of love with it. I enjoyed everything I was doing off the field, and it was just a pretty easy decision for me. I got a chance to work for Barstool, learn a lot about the way the Internet works, and now I'm kind of doing my own thing. And this could all come crashing down terribly, Dan, I think that is definitely an option, but we'll see how it goes. Well, now. What, what happened with Barstool? Again, Pat McAfee with us. He's one of the interesting guys, a free spirit. Uh, and, and by the way, it's crazy of you to be the punter and be the guy who was willing to say the things that you were saying. I, it, I don't even know how you got the cojones to do that because football doesn't have any time for that, but especially not from one of the kickers. I, did, I was really good at my job. I mean, I was, uh, I was really good at my job, and I was respected in the locker room, I think. I was always the I – I showed up to work ready to go to town there. I was first one in the meetings. I like to take a, a, a big role in the locker room of bringing the team together. So I don't think your position on the field really matters. I think it's the human, you know. I, th I think it's the Native American. It's not the arrow. That's kind of how I viewed everything. And I just took a leadership role whenever Grigson and the whole team – the new regime came in. They cut Peyton Manning, by the way. They cut Peyton Manning. Mm -hmm. So then I all of a sudden become one of the voices of the team. And there was a lot of things that were going wrong with the new regime. And I was the guy to just pointed them out after I retired. Not during, but after I retired. And those have seemed to do pretty well. But, yeah, I'm just – I'm very comfortable in who I am. I knew that I was very good. They, If they were to cut me, I knew some other team would have to pick me up. I was really good at kicking footballs, and I was good friends with Jim Irsay, too. So that's a nice thing to have in your back pocket is the owner billionaire guy being a fan of yours. He <laughs> yeah. follows me on the Twitter. So does his lady. That's good news. And I just kind of uh, I just kept it real with the peoples. And uh, for a punter, it was a little wild, but... I just kind of let her fly, brother, and see what happens. If somehow you were playing a weird game where the person with the best Peyton Manning story wins the game, what's the story you're going with? I mean, there's so many. He used to fly me around the country to drink beers and tell stories like I was a dancing monkey, man. He <laughs> he watched me uh, chug a beer my rookie year in training camp, and from that point forward, he was a huge fan. I was coming right out of West Virginia University, Morgantown, and I could put down a beer in an impressive fashion, and that was something that I think he was impressed by. So I got a chance to travel around with Peyton a little bit, party with him a couple times, have some beers with him. I think the best story is the one that I've told a couple times where in a casino, French Lick, Indiana, he walks past me by while I'm at a roulette table, slaps me on the, the right ass cheek, all right, gives me a gun and a wink and says, I'll see you tomorrow morning, and then says, how about that red 18, right, with a walk-off. And I'm like, well, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life, you know, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time just slapped my ass here in this little small town in Indiana, and then he told me to go on red 18. By that point, I had already had chips around. I was like, number one, that's the number I wear. That's definitely going to hit. Standard roulette operation. I hold Adam Vinatieri's balls. Let's put that on number four four that's definitely gonna hit maybe the 33 number just because it looks good so i had to pick up everybody else's chips and move my chips out from underneath them right had to do that whole thing i put all of my chips on the red 18 this is a true story everybody else at the table looks at me after peyton leaves because obviously peyton's a god everywhere but in indiana it's next level they look at me they go 
uh, we should probably do that too. Huh? And I'm like, absolutely. Every single chip on the table was like 1.30, maybe 2 a.m. at this casino was on Red 18. It looked like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. You gotta it be looked like me. The, the Washington Monument. And obviously, Red 18 hits. I tell him the next morning, I'm like, yo, did you know that when you hit the gun in a wink on me and said Red 18, <laughs> everybody bet on Red 18 and then Red 18 hit? He looked me dead in my eyes and just said, yep. And, I, and then I was just like, holy, <laughs> why this dude is next level. And from that point forward, I was like, if this dude tells me to jump, I'm going to jump. And now you know why I allegedly ended up in the canal that night on October 20th, 2010. I mean, that's just, that's my life in a nutshell. Right there. That is a great <laughs> story. You are good. The Pat. dumbest I mean, guy on that, that is a great story. Uh, I feel like Tom Brady would have somehow done that better. I don't know how it could have been done better, but I feel, oh, wow. uh, you know, black 12 and boom. <laughs> and then all, all of a sudden, I, you know, they would have been taking uh, money uh, straight out of Peyton Manning's bank account. Well, I think what Peyton Manning would have, the only way he gets better there is if he has the greatest coach of all time next to him like Tom Brady has. So that could probably help. <laughs> but there's no doubt about it that Tom Brady is the greatest football player to ever step foot on a football field. And uh, I think we're all lucky to watch it. And I was honored to be Peyton Manning's teammate and shower with him every once in a while. It was a good time. Is, uh, <laughs> give, us, give us something that uh, tells us that Andrew Luck is every bit the Pleasantville character that we think he is, that it's just all, no. by golly, aw shucks. There's nothing sinister there. There's nothing there other than uh, you want to hug him all the time. Yeah, he's just like a, he's the nerdiest dude on earth who happens to be put into the, like the stereotypical, prototypical NFL quarterback's body. Every time I talk to him, you got to use context clues to figure out what the hell the word. He uses SAT words just in standard <laughs> sentences. I'm a basic ass dude. I don't know what that means, Andrew. So he like basically tries to assist me in my education process so I can just have a conversation with him. 